is everybody and welcome back to another episode of Winning Without Borders with me, Kenny Nguyen. And I would like to say this has been such an emotional roller coaster for the past few weeks because I am actually leaving Vietnam the end of next week. And really the past year and a half has been uh, one of the best times of my entire life having the chance to live in the country my parents grew up in reconnecting with family and culture meeting wonderful and inspiring people visiting breathtaking jaw-dropping places like um this has been a dream that i've always wanted and it came true this past year and a half so um, i feel very humbled to be living here I'm grateful, appreciative, but I am really sad too because uh, in one week or so, um, I'm gonna say goodbye to the motherland. And I will be back, but it's gonna be quite some time. But uh, anyways, in today's video, I kind of want to do another reflection video and talk about things that has been bugging me for the past year and a half here. Uh, and so let's get to it. Uh, today's video, I'm gonna talk about how my parents feel about me moving to the country that they desperately fled. Uh, I came to Vietnam in May of 2018 after working in Japan for a couple months. I left Japan, as some of you know, because I was getting stressed, uh, depressed, and uh, demotivated and it uh, drained me and my health started to deteriorate and that's why I had to make a decision to uh, better myself uh, and I left Japan to Vietnam in May of 2018. Now, um, when I told my parents that Japan was not working out and that my health was just you know, falling to the ground, uh, they were like, hey, you do what's best for you. And I think they thought that I was gonna move back home to the US after that short stint in Japan. But that wasn't the case. I told them, you know, Japan's not gonna work out, but I'm thinking about moving to Vietnam. How do you guys feel about that? Now, before I even asked that question, I knew already knew like my parents and grandparents were going to be flustered, confused, agitated, and I understand it. My parents left my parents and grandparents left the Vietnam War in 1975. They went on these boats, small boats, and went into the South China Sea, stayed there for a week or two weeks, and they were finally rescued by the, I think the US Navy, I think, I'm not quite sure, but they were rescued and they were taken to the Hong Kong refugee camps where they stayed there for months before they were relocated to another country. That country was the United States for my parents and grandparents. And I understand that those times out in the middle of the ocean were, that time was very traumatic for them um, because they did not know uh, where their next meal was going to be. If they were going to be captured by pirates, if their boat would capsize. There are so many things that could have happened those few weeks out in the ocean, but fortunately it did not. And so um, their minds are just filled with negative experiences from Vietnam. And that is why they were so frightened and stressed when they heard that I was moving back to a country that they escaped from, you know? They always tell me, hey, you know, we left this country to give you a better life, to give you better opportunities. And Vietnam was actually the better opportunity for me the past few years, you know? And whatever story I tell my parents, like the highlights of Vietnam, not talking about the bad, but mostly the good. They still refuse to accept it. And I think as they get older in age, um, it will really be hard for me to change their opinion 
And what, what is so interesting here is that my parents and grandparents, they're always, they're so fixated about the past. But when I meet Vietnamese locals here, nobody talks about the hard times, the difficult times, like the Vietnam War. Everybody has moved on. Even John McCain, who was captured by uh, the Vietnamese army and was taken into uh, a prison in Hanoi, he even came back and he let bygones be bygones. Yeah, I hope uh, my parents one day kind of let bygones be bygones. But let me tell you, it has not been easy for the past year and a half. Before when I even came to Vietnam, my parents were like, don't go. Like, do you know what happens when people go to Vietnam? They will get their hands chopped off. Did you read, son, did you read that story in the newspaper about uh, a woman wearing jewelry on her wrist and they took a knife and they cut her hand off? Have you heard the story uh, about people on motorbikes driving around and just like injecting people with needles? Have you heard that story that uh, people are getting sick and ill from the seafood they are eating? And so every single story they told me, it's all been negative. I mean, I'm sure these things do happen, but they're not very common. And not only my mom and my grandpa, my dad and my grandma even just told me horrendous things just to keep me away from the country that they escape. And let me just say, I've been living here for a year and a half. I'm healthy, I'm well, I have a good mindset. I wanna go home because my relationship between my family and America has been solely deteriorating. I haven't spoken to my grandpa in a few months. Same goes for my dad. And I speak to my mom every now and then. But I kind of stopped talking to them because every time like they would call me, it's just so negative, you know? Uh, they never really asked me, how are you doing, son? Are you healthy? Are you eating well? Are you exercising? Uh, what are some interesting, interesting things you're doing that day? Or uh, did you have a good weekend? No, they never asked me that. It's just, I just feel like personal attacks to me. Uh, every time my grandpa calls, it's like he doesn't, he, he gets to the point. He's very blunt, very direct. And every time he calls me, he's like, when are you coming home? I don't want you in this damn country. And that goes uh, for my dad as well. My mom, on the other hand, she doesn't like me living here, but you know, she does ask me, like, how was my day? How was my weekend? And that's nice. My grandpa and my dad, they're in the offensive mode and um, just personally attacking me every time. And I'm tired of that. And for that reason, I kind of don't want to talk to them because every time I call them, you know, I just know that they are never really supportive of anything. You know, even my grandpa said that you threw your whole life away. We've gave you so many opportunities in America, but you left and you threw it all away. And I tell them, you have given me opportunities. I have the opportunities in America. I also have opportunities abroad here in Vietnam and many other countries. But with that being said, they don't care. They don't care about um, my self-development, my accomplishments, what I've learned here in Vietnam from my family, from, from the people here and, and friends that I've met about the country. They don't care anything at all about that. And it's put me to tears, you know, to have, to not really have a family that supports me. And I've met other VQs and uh, that goes to them as well. But there are also other VQs who have, you know, come to Vietnam for business uh, and other things and they have done well here. They've become very successful, you know. I've come to Vietnam and not only have I made an impact in my students' lives, I've also made a lot of money that I off into my student loans. Something that would have taken years to pay off in America uh, is only going to take me a couple more years, you know? And I tell, you know, my grandpa that, but um, he just disregards that fact. And so I'm kind of, I've been, everything here has been going well. Like I'm having the time of my life here. And I don't regret 
moving to Vietnam. I just wish that my parents were more supportive of me, but um, they're they're always bashing me for what I do, and I kind of don't want to. And I and and this is why I'm moving home because I don't want my relationship to get to a point where it is unfixable. You know, I want to come back home and I want to fix this relationship because I'm not getting any younger and my grandparents and parents aren't getting any younger. God forbid something happens and we left off on a very sour note. I do not want that for myself or my family. You know, I love them to death. And there are just things we disagree with and that's fine. But there are healthy ways in dealing with a situation like this. And I, I don't want to put the blame on them entirely. I understand their past experiences are going to affect how they think and react to my decisions now. Um, but I hope that when I come home in a week and a half that the healing will begin. Um, and to add on from and to add on I have so many great stories of me being here in Vietnam stories of family stories of locals and friends my experiences here I have videos and pictures to show to them Vietnam is not like what it was back in the day and I truly feel that through the images the stories that I will share their outlook on Vietnam will change it's not going to be easy but I feel that I was here for a purpose you know to shed light about Vietnam's uh, development its growth uh, not like what it was back in the day during the war and through my experiences, I feel I am able to shift their opinion in a positive way. Um, but that will take time. And yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. Um, but uh, if you guys have like any advice or suggestions about how to deal with it, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, the people. I'm pretty sure for some who follow my blog, you guys are also, um, you know, Vietnamese Americans, Vietnamese Canadians, where you're from. If you are going through this uh, sensitive situation, uh, please comment, please message, because I would like to discuss discuss with you, and and try to figure out a way to deal with this situation and to make it better than what it is right now. A week and a half left in Vietnam, I'm going to spend all my time with loving family and close friends. I'm going home to see other family and friends in Chicago, so I am so excited uh, to see you all. I miss you all dearly. I can't believe I've been away for two years. But this has been like the best time of my, the best decision actually of my entire life. A few years ago, the dream of living abroad seemed so far-fetched, unattainable. but. I've learned a lot through my journey, and um, that is to try do this, do that, because I didn't have the confidence, I didn't have the motivation, um, and I was always fearful of failing. But what I've learned from living in Vietnam, after applying to work 50 jobs, you know, eventually you'll find somebody that will believe in you, and I would take that back to, with me to Chicago. So. It has been year, a year of growth and development. Uh, I am so happy with myself. I am not the person that I was a year ago, but I do have to know there are so many things I can improve for myself and everybody around me. And with that said, it's a beautiful day outside. I'm gonna go enjoy it because the time is ticking. I know, because the clock is ticking. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a like. Uh, if you don't like it, give it a dislike and please tell me why. I take everybody's comments seriously and I kind of just want to 
you know, become a better influencer on YouTube. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna head out now. Thank you for watching my video. And if you guys have any comments, uh, messages to relate to me, please do so. And with that said, you guys have a wonderful day. And we'll see you guys on another episode of Winning Without Borders. Bye-bye, guys.